Welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna teach you a few tips and tricks that I've learned over the years for production sewing. So what exactly is production sewing? Well, it's basically doing a bunch of things all at once. So instead of creating one wristlet, like this one, I'm so glad I have one to show, um, you're gonna create several, whether that be two, four, or a hundred, depending on the size of the show uh, and how many materials you have available at your disposal. So uh, let's go ahead and hop right into those tips and tricks. Okay, so I guess your first step's gonna be trying to figure out what it is you're gonna make. What is that one item that you think you're gonna do 10 of or 20 of? Um, for me, um, I'm going to be doing a local farmer's market I know the audience. I don't think the audience is gonna be into $80 to $100 bags. So I'm gonna make wristlets. These wristlets, um, I actually have a uh, video on, a video tutorial. It is by Blue Kala and it is called the Clematis. Um, and I love it. It's fantastic. It's so easy to put together and it's really classy looking. I love it. So this is what I'm gonna choose to make. And the reason that I'm choosing to make this instead of these backpacks is not just a price point and trying to figure out my audience because this will actually be my first time doing a farmer's market in my new area. Um, it's because these are quick and they don't take a whole lot of materials. I can use a lot of different uh, techniques and tools to get ready to go to the sewing machine faster. So let's slip right into tip number one. Your first tip's going to be trying to figure out if you have enough materials to make the thing at quantity. So do you have enough of the fabric, the interfacing, straps, D-rings, all of that stuff. I would like to take a moment to show you Inventora. I have done a full video review of Inventora and showing you how I manage my materials library and the products and what materials that um, they need in order to be made. I'll put a little card in the video so you can get to it if you wanna see a full review of Inventora. Um, and I would like to give a big shout out to Inventora for sponsoring this video. So I'm just gonna pop right over to the desktop view, boop. Okay, so now we're looking at Inventora. Um, this is an application that basically replaced spreadsheets for me. I was using spreadsheets to keep track of all the materials and doing all the fuzzy math. And for anybody who's ever kept track of me, I suck at math. Um, so I use this application to basically categorize all of the materials that I need to make any of the products that you see on my website. Yes, I sell products, not just patterns. Um, and I have everything input in here. And the thing that I really like about it is it does all of the material costs and breakdown for me. So if I have, for example, um, let's see, well, the Whisper Vinyl that I love I love to use the Whisper Vinyl. Um, I get this from Joann's, by the way, no, no huge secret. Um, let me hide my camera so you can actually see. Hello, it's good to be able to see these things. Okay, so my Whisper Vinyl. So you can see I have four and a quarter yards in stock. So it's sitting in my closet. Um, it cost me 14 bucks a yard, but mind you, I did get this when it was on sale. It's normally around 30. Um, and I warn myself if I get to the half yard value. Uh, the reason I do with a half yard is because I need to wait for a sale. <laughs> Um, so, but you can see down here at the bottom, the history where I've created this basically, and then I had to make a bag, um, and it automatically deducted the amount that I used, and now it's updated my stock level. So I always have an up-to-date reference to how much of the uh, material is actually left in stock. And I can just at a glance look through here and be like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm running low on D-rings, which I'm not, I'm sorry. This is actually a lot of D-rings, but if it got down to a certain amount, the, the 12 pieces, <sighs> I might panic. So, because I order those from China and they take months to get here. Um, so I give myself a pretty decent heads up. And I don't really put a lot of like 
products out all at once. Um, for anybody who's ever paid attention, I usually am just sewing like one or two bags uh, a week on Twitch and I, I, they're usually gone by the time I'm done streaming. Cool. So this is my materials list. So we're going to go down to products and you can see here that I don't have stock for my Floral Wars Clematis. So, um, you know, sometimes I will use this as like a, a one-off um, thing. You know, if I have a if I have a bag that's a one of the kind, um, I may just use this as a reference, but I won't actually input it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say how much of this we would like to make. So I'm actually um, interested and, and I, I, I'm probably going to hate myself for this. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna make four of these. I think originally I said that I was going to be uh, forget prep, I was gonna make two, but I think we should do four. Um, and I will just cut short the demonstration pieces. Um, so I'm going to do a production load uh, with four of these. So we're uh, hopefully by the end of this, we're going to go from zero to four and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna update. So this is everything that we're going to need. This is, kind of awesome. Um, so it, it will go ahead and it will tell me that uh, we're gonna need, um, you know, uh, about mm, almost half a yard of fabric. Um, and, and bear in mind, like, even though you're going up a certain amount of inches, you're not exactly using up a whole quarter yard um, because just because of the way things are cut. Um, so we can see how much of the Decaville we need. Uh, we're gonna need four pieces for the D-rings um, and our zipper tape's gonna go down. We're gonna use four zipper pulls and here's all my webbing. And you can see where you're gonna end up and, and how much you're going to need, which is really awesome. Um, so then you have your batch information down here. If you go under batches and you click on that, then you can actually see how much instead of doing the math on the other page like I was stumbling through, you can actually see right here um, how much you're gonna need. And you do have enough. Um, nothing warned me, um, and it would have. It would have shown red if I was unable to create the thing. Um, so again, you know, using, using something like this to manage your materials is priceless. That, that's not meant to be a pun, but it sounds pretty cool. Tip number two, grab everything that you need from that materials list, whether you did it in Inventura or some other thing, and lay it out somewhere on a table, on the floor, in your husband's side of the bed. Just put it somewhere so that you can lay it out in the order in which it's going to be used. This will make it easier for you to find the thing instead of spending hours staring at a bookcase wondering where the thing is because you never label things. Henry Ford did it best by introducing assembly line production. And that's exactly what you're going to be doing in tip number three. Embrace your inner Henry Ford. All joking aside, you're going to do everything that you would be doing for one bag, but all at once. So in my case, I'm going to cut the exterior fabric four times, the lining four times, the Decaville four times. So these are the things you're all gonna do. And I would advise that you basically make yourself a checklist of all the things that you need to do so you can keep track of it and make sure you don't miss any steps like putting the, you know, D-ring attachment on the side of your wristlet before you sew it all up and flip it right side out. And this tip, what you're gonna wanna do is hold your pants because I'm gonna speed up your cutting process. And if you actually do like cutting, you need to exit that way because you're a masochist and this video is not for you. <laughs> All jokes aside, there are two ways that you can speed up your cutting that don't actually involve teaching your cats how to use a rotary cutter. You can use acrylic templates, and I have given a tutorial in the past. Uh, I'll leave cards above on how you can buy these and use these or even create your own if you 
feel so plucky and crafty. The other thing you can use is a craft cutter, Cricut, Silhouette, rather scan and cut. You can use any of these things to basically bulk cut out the pieces that you need uh, while you do something else, like floss your teeth or paint your nails or prepare the zippers. Okay, for this next tip, I'm shielding myself because the people who like to basically Frankenstein together interfacing are going to hate this one. Aha, how many of you have a bucket of scrap interfacing that you swear high and low you're gonna use one day, but you never do, and it just keeps collecting dust? Guilty, every single last one of you. So I am going to go ahead and blow your minds. You don't have to use every single ounce of your interfacing. Go ahead and lay out everything in the most optimal fashion, preferably go ahead and pre-press so this stuff doesn't happen during a demonstration. But lay it out, get it all up in there, however you think is going to be best. So you're Frankensteining, but in the opposite way. See, as I, I, I pay attention, you guys will do this all over the place um, and try to Frankenstein together some woven interfacing and it's just not good. It's just gonna lead to wrinkles and um, non-supported sections of fabric. So what I'm gonna suggest to you is bonkers. This is actually gonna save on your cutting as well as your pressing times. Do it like this. Just daisy chain this mess up and shove it under a heat press, steam press without steam, or just use your iron. But either way, it's still going to be faster than individually cutting out each little piece of interfacing, applying it to the uh, fabric, watching the fabric shrink, and then the interfacing is the wrong size anyway. So go ahead and press it like this. It ends up being better in the long run. Um, and I guess the only thing I would actually suggest is to iron the fabric before you put it down on the interfacing, you know, so it doesn't do this stuff for video. Um, but if you do this, you will be cutting this piece once instead of twice. Next, you're going to use a leader. I'm gonna borrow a tip from quilters. If you use a leader, which is a piece of fabric that simulates the fabric that you're actually trying to sew, in this case, I'm going to be sewing vinyl for the ends of my zippers, then you can just continue sewing through. So instead of back stitching, stitching, back stitching, cutting, moving to the next, you can just sew straight through and go on and 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 on. So this would be a leader. So on the tips for the ends uh, of my zippers, I'm gonna be using vinyl. And the reason I say to use the exact same fabric that you're going to be using um, for the stitch that you're trying to chain um, is because some machines, not this one, will have automatic tension and it might throw it off if you switch from doing some like scrap fabric, um, you know, like let's say we did like a quilting cotton and then switch to something like this. Now, my domestic machine, which is a Janome M7, it can handle it, but I don't know. I don't know what machine you have and what it can handle. So the idea is that you're not going to backstitch. You're just gonna sew straight on through. And at least, you know, you, you might be worried, well, what happens, you know, when I cut this and everything, this seam here is gonna get sewn in and locked. So you're not gonna have to worry about this particular top stitch coming apart or other stitches coming apart because they're eventually going to get caught in a seam and that will lock them in place. So we're gonna start our stitching and I'm gonna line up the items that I'm going to be sewing. I'm gonna hold my thread tails because I'm a good girl, dial in my stitch length and I'm just gonna start sewing. So. The, the magic to this is it won't pull your thread tails under. So some machines, when you do like the locking stitch, it might make like a knot underneath. And sometimes, well, let's say most of the times, it's gonna burp nest and it's gonna look horrible. So the idea is to not have that 
um, and also not to catch the edge of the fabric and kind of like tuck it, pinch it, or pull it under. So instead, you stop with your needle a little, a little down, or you don't really have to, and then you just keep sewing. So we're gonna sew right through that. And then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna lift my presser foot, take off the clip, I don't wanna sew it, and continue. And when we get to the end of the line, we're gonna go around the back, and we're gonna free the leader. Wow, yay! And then we're gonna bring it back forward and start it all over again. Ah, like that. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna free these zippers. So you see they are together, and we're gonna do it one more time so you can kind of see what it is that I'm doing. So again, the leader went back through. And wee! There it goes. And another one, lift that presser foot. You don't wanna shove this in there and then have the fabric get pulled under, kind of defeats the purpose. Wee! And that's basically it. So you're just gonna bring back the item, whatever it is that you're sewing, um, and you're gonna come back and you'll clip it apart so you have your individual pieces and you're gonna keep the leader. You're gonna keep this thing and you're gonna keep using it for the bag. Now, for me, this is gonna end up being the same thickness as the canvas with the Decafil on it, so I can keep using this one. Just assess it based on what you feel is best for your project. And then we have those zippers done pretty darn quickly. It's not like astronomical. You're not Superman scooting across the, the planet or anything. Um, but it's definitely faster than putting this on, sewing it, clipping it, rinse, repeat. So it's like, boom, boom, done. The last tip I'm gonna give you might be the most important one, regardless of what it is that you're sewing. I've learned this the hard way. Ask me how I know. You need to have extra bobbins ready, sitting on the sidelines, ready to go. If you're gonna be sewing production line like this, you're gonna be changing your bobbin more than you're changing these giant spools of Tex 70 thread. So uh, definitely wind a few bobbins. I know that at least for myself, I use about half of a bobbin for Clematis. So I'm gonna have a probably four or five, just to be safe, of these guys sitting off to the side. And that's it for this video. I hope that helped you. Please leave your tips and tricks down below if there was something that I didn't mention that you might find helpful to others and you want to share. And again, big thank you to Inventor for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in checking it out, I'm gonna leave a card somewhere on the screen here and you can go and you can look at that video where I've reviewed it and gone through all of the features of Inventora. Um, I also have a code down below. Um, feel free to use it if you'd like to give it a shot. Uh, as always, like, subscribe, thank you very much, blah, 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 bye!